the boss Lisa around and take the microphone away. I can't. Well, <laughs> but she's the high priestess, so, so I, I can't deny the high priestess. So can I please quickly get these individuals front and center? James Cleveland, Mary Barassa, Lisa and Jason, Sam Shaw, Glenn Waddell, Courtney Muir, Jamie Packer, our local host, Daniel, please come on up. Megan Hayes Golding and Tina volunteer, um, a lot of hard work that they do. Um, I'm happy to call them all friends, and I think it's amazing that there are 200 people here who would say the same. Um, so thanks again to, to uh, Graham Fletcher, I almost called him Graham Fletcher, sorry, <laughs> and, and John Stevens for um, coordinating a thank you gift for everyone. I have um, gift cards for every committee member, except for Mary, because she's Canadian. <laughs> and just to clarify, they just don't like these particular gift cards in Canada, so we have an alternative. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you, everyone. And I'm going to stand over there and distribute these and let Carl uh, get on with it. Uh, thank you for indulging us. God's honest truth. I cannot, I do not, and cannot do this by myself. And um, this this group of people has really um, held me up a lot this year, and I am incredibly grateful for that. Um, but that's this is I'll get into later. So this is Carl because this is Carl's time. Yes. Carl is a okay, in that state up north that I don't say um, born. New York City based assistant principal at, at City S High School High School at, at City S School High School. And it's a little different. Yeah, a little different. He's on the publishing committee for NCTM, was a school leader fellow at Math for America New York. He's been to PCMI. He's done other stuff too. You can ask him about it at the bar or whatever later. Carl wants to say a thank you to myself and the rest of the committee and hopes that the audience can give them all a round of applause, but it looks like we've already done that. Um, <laughs> Kate kind of jump-started that for us. Uh, Kate, Carl first started blogging in 2005 on Blogger, but didn't get into the MitBoss until recently, and has since helped with Global Math Department and some other MitBoss initiatives. He is going to talk about hitting the darn send button. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Oliver. All right, PMC, let's do this. Um, first, I want to thank um, everybody, even though I thank the mechanics. I feel like you can't thank people enough, right? Uh, I also want to thank Sadie for putting this on Periscope right now. And if you're on Periscope watching this either now or in the future, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is make this like a live uh, Twitter chat. So there's going to be questions posted here, and those questions are going to be like answered, hopefully, by people outside of this room as well. And in the future, if you're watching this, you could go back and you can look at the conversation that's going to take place maybe on Storify, or, or you just go search the hashtags that the hashtag puts in. So um, if you want to do any sort of back channel conversation, that's the hashtag over there. And as far as the, the actual prompts, 
Um, Kate, who's just up here, and uh, Benjamin, who's also just up here, uh, volunteered to, to help tweet those out as well. So that'll be good for, for you guys who are staring at your screens and not looking at me, as well as the people on the internet at home. Anyways, silently uh, by yourselves, think about a, let me get this, time where you pushed send and something good happened. Think of a time that you pushed send, shared something, and then there's a positive outcome. Everybody got something? All right, so share that with your neighbor. And then while you're at it, tweet it out um, with the hashtag Q1 and hashtag push send. And you don't need to do TMC because I think I'm the only push send going right now, but if you want to do that, All right. When I applied for my job to you. I was like, I'm having a hard time thinking earlier, but like today, when I like tweeted, hey, yeah, I do these like test corrections, or I just give them a test that has every problem done wrong, and so everyone has to correct it, and like everyone is like retweeting it, and I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? So I'm like having a hard time having a early, because that's just like, exactly what popped in my head. <laughs> Yeah, but it's just like this little thing that I did, it seemed to resonate with me, so. About another 30 seconds on this. So, thank you, and if you guys do tweet it out, that'll be really good, and this will be useful later. Uh, I guess I should share my story, so I'll do that as well. And uh, at some point in February, I had a question and I tweeted it out. I wanted to know, is there a Twitter chat for people who like to talk about or teach non-routine problems that have like a conversation afterwards? So that was, that was what I put out there. And I was curious about it. I honestly didn't have this whole idea fleshed out. Luckily, I got some feedback from people um, in the uh, Twitter blogosphere who then gave me some ideas. Eventually, the idea was I should make a Twitter chat about it. And apparently all you have to do is just pick a day and time and, and it exists. So, uh, so I did that. I picked a day, I picked a time, five, seven days after that, uh, this thing prod chat started, and it was, it was a positive thing. It was a good thing. Uh, a lot of stuff happened. I eventually created a lot, this, a lot of resources for teachers that was useful. I, I also created um, what I call an initiative. It's a, a space for people to get together and like, communicate and talk about teaching and learning and, and whatever. So this this is uh, something that I created and I also created some actual real connections with people. Some people who are like, out here in this room right now uh, and in other, too many to mention. But because of my work in that, it was actually like a real positive thing. So all these things that happened to me when I pushed in, which uh, again were I understood I got different perspectives from different people when I, when I put it out there. I got some feedback about my ideas and what could happen. That then became a, a source of resources. I got resources, I gave resources, so the, you know, back and forth with that, as well as creating a, a place for uh, participation and the connection with real people. So you guys just thought of something and you shared, did I cover the benefits, the positives from your experience in these five categories? This pretty much cover everybody, did you raise your hand if that was the case? I'm just curious, show of hands, did I do it pretty? Okay, so this is a pretty good framework of what good things can happen if you actually do it. If you're pushing the button, if you're putting yourself out there, if you're growing. And these things actually are, are really important and a lot of people agree with me. That, um, one, one thing, NCTM says principles to action that there's this norm of teacher isolation, this, the, which is the reverse of this push and send thing, and that it has to give way to a new professional normal collaboration. It's something um, that where people will collaborate with their colleagues and open their practice to collective observation, study, and improvement. And this is from principles to action, but in principles to action, I've actually quoted a book from 2007. So yeah, 10 years ago we realized that, that something like this was needed. So this is important. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Ellie Drago Severson. She's a researcher that researches what, what kinds of things help teacher growth, uh, transformative adult learning. 
and it talks about teaming, teachers working together on something, mentoring, teachers having a, a partner that they work together on, collegial inquiry, and leadership roles. Some of these things are things that happen when we connect online, uh, when we connect in this, in this myth boss that we're in. Or whatever, the other one. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Charlotte Danielson, she's got the four domains of teaching. A lot of you, your states have this, so I really don't want to like bring up the bad feelings. But <laughs> fourth, the fourth domain, um, professionalism, reflecting on teaching, participating in the professional community, growing and developing professionally, showing professionalism, all these things are things that you're doing. If your administrator catches you on Twitter, you can say, oh, I'm just polishing up that domain four. Uh, so... <laughs> And reflecting, I mean, there's so many places where the idea of just reflecting in general, like thinking about what you do and then doing, you know, writing about it or, or sharing that reflection. So valuable, so many books. So what's the point? I guess I'm saying is like, look, this push in thing is sitting on like a platform. Uh, uh, it's solidly grounded in lots of very well-respected research. It's not just some stuff we're doing. It's not just like a distraction or whatever. So, with all these good, positive things that can come out of this, why is it so, why is it so hard? Like, why is it so hard to do? It's, 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 it's like, if it's such a good thing, why aren't uh, more people doing it? And um, so to answer that question, I sat down with someone who's not doing it. Uh, I was talking to <laughs> This person, not to be named, who may or may not be female, uh, was, uh, it actually happened to you, I was telling him, oh, I have this talk coming up, and, and, and I was like, you know, but, you know, you should do this, we're sitting here at this, like, math event, like, you totally benefit from this, she's like, yeah, I know, I would, you're right, like, I really should, I, I get it, and I'm like, well, why don't you, and this is what she said, so, the, uh, the first thing, for the people in this, the, the non twitter vloggers group people, uh, she said it was time, and that's real. That's real for all of us in the Twitter here too. Kids, work, um, family stuff, whatever. Game of Thrones, apparently. Like, it's <laughs> only so, so much time you can spend. Uh, technical proficiency. I, she, she pulled out her phone, and it, I guess it was, it is kind of confusing. There's a lot of things to explain. Like, why is there a pound sign? And what is the at sign? And, and why do you call it an at when it, yeah, whatever? So, so there's a lot of stuff that you have to explain. And then if you explain, if you talk about like the regular things that are hard to explain in terms of technology, then there's also like the layer of, of, of our own communications that's hard to explain too, that don't have as familiar or easy to, easy to find resources. So then you have to go through technology to get the resources that explain to you how to use the tech. It's, oh yeah, it's a real thing. Um, then, once you're on there, keeping up. There's so much stuff, and it seems like it's growing a lot. And so it becomes this almost like slog to know what's going on and who's referencing what. And, there, and that's a very difficult thing. There's also uh, anonymity. And this was, this was a big thing, obviously. Uh, and there's a couple like flavors of this. So the one is sort of like the you know, professional responsibility anonymity as someone who's educating children and is in a position uh, where they're also representing their school, the district, or their organization, that they're, they're just, you can't say everything that's on your mind because you might be putting your career in jeopardy, you can't say what other people are doing or share what students are working on because you might be putting their privacy in jeopardy. So how do you gauge that anonymity in a way that lets you, you know, participate and not be like frightened. So there's, there's that, and then there's also this level of anonymity that's important too, of just comfort. Like, am I really comfortable putting myself out there like that? If I, when I was um, back in 2005, the blog that I said I started, I actually never shared that with anybody. That blog is like no one. There's like four people who read it because I was not ready to put myself out there like that. And that's a that emotional safety thing is really important, and people need to know how to gauge that. And that's something that like. What's happening? With all these things, though, I feel like these are barriers for people in here, too, for people in the, the larger community, too. It's, it's something that, that happens all the time. It's just that for the person who I was interviewing, they were enough to prevent them from actually, like, making the bridge over to where they were actually going to, you know, hit the button and push send. 
So since we're all dealing with it and, and it's something that we all have to do as a reality, it might be a good time to talk to your neighbor, think about one of these barriers that you have overcame, that's the right word, right? Uh, and, or one that you still struggle with, and, and share that with your neighbor. And if you get a chance afterwards, you can tweet it out. So let me get, take a minute, you can do that. What's a barrier that's really good with it or have come to a place where you, you know, manage some strategies to do it? And having those strategies somewhere would be really useful. That somewhere could at least could perhaps start with this uh, hashtag. So if you haven't, go ahead and tweet, tweet those out, uh, whatever you can, either now or later. Um, so the person uh, who I interviewed, I was like, was there anything else? Was there any other issues? Uh, and and there was. There was this, this big issue. This is honestly the first issue. The first thing that she said when I was like, well, why aren't you why aren't you put it out there? And it was basically that, like, she's like, well, I'm kind I'm not uh, enough. I'm not, you know, I'm not, maybe I'm not um, whatever enough. I'm not sure what that whatever was. It's kind of different for, for every person. I think some people choose one or two with witty enough, not photogenic enough. Some people you talk to, to where if they're not cool enough, not smart enough. That's a big one. So these not whatever enough, it's hard because it's, it, it exists in, in their head and it's hard to, to tell people that that's the case. Uh, it's also hard to know how widespread this is. And I was worried about this too when I was thinking about this talk because I was like, how, could I, how can I really gauge what's going on with the whole thing? And I you know, we only have so much time for these talks to prepare. So I did the, sort of the only thing that, that made, would make sense to, to me. And that was, well, oh yeah, so I asked the question, right? If, if my boss was, was the only four people that are something, there was something that, there, if there was some like inner circle that, you know, that was there, how would we know that? What would that look like? And to figure this out, I decided to literally download every single hashtag my boss tweet with some minor uh, data collection errors, <laughs> ever and analyze them for patterns. That's, so that's what I did. Except for January and February 2014. Sorry about that. That was like your... <laughs> <laughs> that was a sweet spot. Sorry. You really didn't just and I didn't get that out of uh, But yeah, I did it because I figured that, that we'd see some trends. So we'd see some... We'd, we'd see this and we'd see some information. So I had some questions. And, and the questions I, I asked, and which might not be the best questions, and I imagine if you have better questions, you could uh, put it on a uh, hashtag. First off, how many of us are there? So that was one question. And how have we grown? How has that worked? And also, how much do we tweet? And with these, I guess what I'm looking for is to see sort of some poor pattern. So like. For the how many of us are there pattern, I'm imagining that there should be a number that grows over time, right? If there, if there isn't, if there's some circle, then it would be a number that it grew and then it stopped because people stopped doing it. Uh, for, that's, that's sort of also this how we grown thing. Is it gonna be, look linear? Is it gonna look like uh, exponential or decay? Uh, and how much do we tweet also? If there was like a group of people that, were, that joined and, and fall, fell off, then I imagine like the tweeting would sort of go up and then come back down and go up and stay, stay straight. So these are three questions. We're gonna go look at these right now. So let's go ahead and, and see what happens here. Um, so just real quick, with your name, like real quick, high and low estimate, how many people ever tweeted my boss? Take, take a second, think about it. <laughs> okay, somebody. Somebody. Hmm? That's a good question. Whoops. All right, so. All right, everybody thought about it. One question that came up 
What, what are we talking about? When have people ever tweeted the hashtag MidBoss? This hashtag wasn't used until April of 2013. So I didn't get, I couldn't get anything after that because that was too much to sift through. And I didn't get any, I didn't get like all the tweets that all the people tweeted because that's also too much work. I just got the tweets that have that hashtag on. I searched for that as the sort of search, search term. Um, and so we need some kind of estimate. What's a low estimate that somebody had? A thousand. A thousand. What's a high estimate? A hundred and fifty thousand. Great. Okay. So this certainly isn't going to disappoint those people. Uh, so then I did it. I, I put all this stuff. It's really like ugly, stupid um, spreadsheet thing that wasn't that exciting. So I made a little website for it. The website uh, I call it Midboss Roll Call or MTB Boat Roll Call. So it's a website there, and, then, and I got to actually pull the images of the people that came in. Um, here's the first two people that tweeted this hashtag on Twitter, which isn't the first person to use the acronym again. That was um, Christopher who was here yesterday. Uh, but yeah, that's the first one. This is the next seven people who use it at once, and then the June. So this is, this is where we're at at this point. Um, and then, oh wait, what happened? That didn't work. Oh, right. So this is all the people through September. This is just October. So we, this is, this is how this was growing, and then this exploded. And this exploded, be, I think, because of the Explore Boss thing, that initiative actually made a, a big impact, and that's also a thing for later, that these initiatives uh, uh, do make a big impact. This growth in that one month is more than the previous how many months, and more than the uh, next how many months. Anyways, so with all this, the question is, how many would there be by the time I stopped actually collecting data, June 6, 2017? So if you guys want to try to like adjust your estimates, if this, if this changes your thing, you can think about it. You know, just for fun, I'll put up a little table here so you guys can actually see what's happening on like, sort of like a month, month level. So we're going to finish this on Desmos. So, so now you can go there and you can get the uh, big reveal. So if you want to go to Desmos, if the people, if you're in the uh, on Twitter too, they can also be in there too. Go in there, put in your estimate, put in your estimate also for the number of tweets that there would have been total by 2016. So it'll, it'll keep like a running tally of all of them.
stirs me. Posted 
alongside MythBoss. So in the tweet, somebody might have posted, hashtag MythBoss, hashtag math chat. You know? Or, or oh, I'm going to have middle school math chat on such and such day, so I'm going to have hashtag MythBoss, hashtag uh, MS math chat. Make sense? So that's what these are. These are all the ones that go with it. And I'm curious what you guys think about this. So I sort of ask on the next slide for you guys to give me your thoughts. Uh, and to share your thoughts with everyone, I'll, I'll try to also put those out in whatever format. Um, so, the, the takeaway that I came away with was that a lot of the hashtags seem to be from chats. So it seems like a lot of the hashtags are about connecting, about looking for opportunities for people to connect or people creating opportunities for people to connect. And there's a lot of conferences too. So it's each team annual, it's each team regional. So it's also real life connections. When those, when those happen, there's a lot of need to post to Midbox. So I think that those things are really important, at least from what I get out of this. But, I'm, you know, I'm not the, I don't know all the information about this. So if you guys have any thoughts, questions, other things to explore, let me know. And this is like a really, really, really big spreadsheet that if you guys want to dive into, I actually think I put it on uh, my blog post that I put out on Monday. So you guys can look at that as well. All right, so that's, so that's that. If you guys have it, please go ahead and fill it out. And... I'll give you like another minute or so to work on this and I'm going to pause you on this and we'll go back into this, the PowerPoint. And I think you get it. MidPoss is really big. It's working for a lot of people. There's a lot of value coming out of it. There are um, some things that we were worried about and, and there's some questions to, to ask. So when I was doing this, I thought, all right, well, let's, let's think about this and, and let's get some more information. The data information is sort of like quantitative research is valuable. What if I get some qualitative research value? And, and that qualitative research involved going back in time to the time before the hashtag started. Because there was certainly a myth boss before 2013. And in that question, so going back to the 2000s, you know, what was life like back then? <laughs> so a lot, you know, a lot of things were different. I, so I talked to seven people, I'm not going to say their names because I don't want it to be about like them, but I try my best to collect all their ideas, and I think those things are really, are really valuable as well. So for those things, for those people, when they talked about the pre-MitBoss, pre-hashtag MitBoss, or before the hashtag, it's, it was just a bunch of teachers who wanted to get better. That's what I heard from, like, across the board. And that they, they wanted to put stuff out there, but they couldn't find a place to put their ideas. That there just wasn't in their district, or just the way their school was set up, the way their structure was, there was, it was sort of loneliness, they felt like they were isolated, and they needed a place that they could, they could have some fresh air. Um, so a lot of people wanted to be a part of a conversation about teaching with other teachers, other educators, that wasn't like the traditional class. Uh, conversation about teaching. Some people were like new to teaching, some people had been in teaching for a very long time, but they all wanted more of a, a type of conversation that just couldn't happen in their schools for whatever reason. So they, they ended up just wanting to open up a window to their classroom. Like if you imagine that so much of teaching is in silos, I think this is a metaphor that's used a lot. If you imagine a big grain silo, a big tube, and Really all you're doing in there is, is sitting down there with a little bit of light from the very top. Well, they wanted to open up a window, a window that could let in some new ideas without necessarily completely opening it up. They didn't like tear it down, just enough so that they could, they could share out ideas without hurting or damaging the, the sort of anonymity and the comfort that they set up. So that's what they did. They just created a little window, a picture like a silo with a little window in it. They, they wanted that. And they wanted to get feedback from each other, too. So they, they put out big ideas, some of these big initiatives that um, you still see going on today. Those things, they went out there in part because they just wanted to get feedback. Like, oh, hey, we'll create this, this website that teachers can come to get activities from. 
And then I'm, I'm also halfway wondering like what they're gonna br bring back and, and give to me and add to my throat. So uh, this give and get situation with resources. And much, much more. I really can't summarize it here. Somebody should probably write a book on it. Uh, and I think that would be really cool. So, so that, was, that was a really big thing. And then I talked to all those teachers uh, and I asked them, you know, why should, why should people do it? Like, why, at that time, the title of my talk was going to be, Why Is It Important to Hit Send? So I said, you know, why is it important to hit send? And I, I asked those teachers that question, and these are each of their answers in order. And I'll just let them sort of speak for themselves. So this is the first one. Why would you take a photograph of family or friends? You want to capture that moment in time. Why is it important to hit send? You want to capture that moment in your profession to either learn from it or celebrate it. Did I skip one? Yeah. Don't be afraid to hit send. It's not important that you do it, but it's important that you don't fear it. There is no moderator. No one's making sure you have a turn. If you're waiting, you may never see your sign. So. Don't be afraid to throw your voice in the mix, otherwise all you hear from are the loud mouths like me. <laughs> it's important to have the voices out there of people who have something different to say. Will I learn something from this? What ultimately will help you is learning, whether it's a question that you might post or something that you want to find out if people agreed or disagreed with. It's good to think of Twitter as a place for learning and a tweet as an opportunity to learn something. Members of a family share things with each other. The most important thing is sharing, so that it opens a window into our lives and our classrooms. I know how much we benefited from other people's wisdom, so pressing sin is a way to stay engaged with the family and to open up the window a little bit. If you press sin, you make yourself smarter. Even if no one reads it, by articulating the words, you will be smarter about it. It's because we had built a trust, a camaraderie among ourselves. We knew we were learning from other vulnerabilities that we weren't alone in our struggles. We took pride in sharing our small successes and seeked comfort in sharing our giant failures. Opening the door to your classroom is an opportunity for leadership. Teachers may not think they are a leader, but opening your door and opening yourself to feedback and saying you want to get better is leadership. All right, so those quotes are on the slide that I just turned off in the, desk, in the activity order, if you want to actually read them and see them all at once. So that's there. And I think that would be useful to reflect on it. I thought there was, that they, were, they spoke to me in a way, I thought there was more powerful than any summarization I could do, so I said straight up, and I sat there and read the PowerPoint slides to you, which is what they tell every presenter to not do, so that gives you an idea of how useful I think they might be to you guys. Uh, and you can just reflect on them, and on that it's a card sort, but there isn't any order. It's just, I, it's easier for, for you guys to see them all, so that was the idea with that. Uh, the last slide of the Desmos activity is a space to, to reflect on it, or, or to maybe even ask your own, and, and I wonder what you guys think. If you were to talk to someone like this um, anonymous, non-TBOs person, and what would you say to them? Um, as far as why, why should they, why should they push in, why should they share it out? So that would be, that's what I'm hoping you guys take a minute to talk about with your neighbor and to try and, and do on your uh, computer. Oops. Conversations 
about uh, a pretty tough concept of sort of like, you know, how do we open this up for, for new people? So certainly, you know, don't stop just to listen to me. Uh, well, I mean, do stop so I can talk, but you can talk after this. You can talk at home, you know, whatever. We're all on Twitter, right? Anyway, I, so I, I'm going to interrupt the, this little part of the story here, and I'm going to talk about uh, myself, because that's an important part, is to make it about myself. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, actually, maybe talk about yourselves for like 20 seconds. I'll just, I'll walk 
I'll start here and I'll walk over there, and then you guys could like clap at the point at which you think I've, I've sort of made it, I'm in there, and then we could keep clapping, and I get an idea of like where it would work. What, what, at what point would it be like, all right, I'm in, it starts. That that makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so right now I'm over here, nobody should be clapping because it's, I'm obviously not doing anything. I'm off the screen. <laughs> this, is, this is me, I'm in high school playing video games. Like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Justin. It's great. Okay, so now I'm gonna start walking. I'll start walking. You guys. Think? All right. So now I'm here. I'm here. This is great. It's a great man. It's like we're having fun. Okay. So the there isn't really a point to this. Um, <laughs> Because there's no real answer, right? It's, it's really hard. It's really hard to for other people to tell somebody else when you have or haven't done it. I think it's up to me, and I feel like I didn't really get it till I was here. And I that's that one's like it's, it's totally in my head. But I don't think I would have got here if it wasn't for real people. I think actually talking to someone and seeing like seeing real people and seeing like their their it's understanding that like there's these real actual people was was probably the biggest turning point for me personally. And if I was gonna do anything with this like little platform that I had, I, I think it would be to try and encourage all of us to look for more ways to get real people to connect. I was lucky that I had, you know, I was in these organizations that could fly into these conferences where I could like meet people. And I know it's not the case for everybody. I know that means that some of these these things don't need to happen online. Um, that's why I'm super excited about the kinds of like initiative situations, like uh, what Explore Big Boss did for so many people right in the initial off going, and what the, the different things that are going on now, like, I don't know, maybe the Man Photo 17 that we're trying to run has, has got somebody off the fence. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think that's, that might be sort of my, my last thing is, is what are the kind of initiatives that, that we could create in order to reduce the amount of, oh, hold on, one more, one more thing I forgot to mention. Right, okay, so as, if you talk about me walking down this, this road and you talk about the vulnerability that Graham mentioned yesterday, as I go from here to there, I'm doing two things. One, I'm making myself more vulnerable because I'm opening myself out to, to more potential people, more, more criticism potentially, or whatever, all the negative things could happen. And at the same time that I'm doing that, something is, is telling me that like, actually, you're not vulnerable. So like, the amount of vulnerability that I feel at the moment is actually getting like, lower and lower because I actually feel held. The, the Elliot Drago Severson's book about lean adult learning talks about a, a holding environment for teachers, and that the growth is really not going to happen unless you feel really like held, like comfortable, like a little kitten in a in a hand. This would have been a good place. A picture that like I'm, there's enough on the internet that I don't need to put it on the screen. So a little a little kitten cuddling up. That's what we want to. That's the kind of environment that that makes someone go from here to over there, and that's the kind of thing that maybe we can create, and we we have successfully. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So what are, what are other initiatives that we could create in order to help reduce the vulnerability and build connection for, for new teachers, for, for new members of whatever hashtag we want to call this thing. So if you could, you could share with the neighbor, you could tweet it out, and you can do this like right now, and you can also do this whenever, like I said, I was going to put this up online, and, and the idea is for this to hopefully start like a larger conversation, um, and then to have as much of that and, uh, be captured later, and to be you know, used for something. So, so that's, that's sort of the, the thing that I'm hoping. Um, I want to give you guys time to talk, and I also want to give you guys time to go to your session. So I feel like that's going to be all I want to say today. And thank you guys. Yeah.